everyone. Welcome to Adobe Live. Um, we're really excited to be here as we've just wrapped up 2020, uh, 2021. Here we go. Um, Let's do it. Off, right? Yep. <laughs> um, so I'm your host today. I'm Danielle Morimoto, and I'm a design manager for Creative Cloud here at Adobe. Um, and we have a very special guest with us today. We have designer Cody Brown. Hello. Excited to be here. Yeah, we're really excited to have Cody back on the stream. Um, I think we were both on together one year ago, I think, well, 2019. Yeah, um, about a year ago. But we were both in the live studio, so we we're just talking about it. it feels a little bit different because we're streaming from our home, so we're not actually together. <laughs> but let us know where you're tuning in from. Um, we want to chat with you guys and get a sense of where everyone is around the world that's tuning in today so we can say a quick hello. Um, but we have a jam-packed schedule for today. Um, so before we jump into anything else, I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, so our agenda, as you can see, um, there was quite a bit on just before us and we just finished up with Andrew. Um, but Cody and myself will be on the stream from 12 to 2 Pacific time today and tomorrow. Uh, so don't forget to tune back in. And then after this, there will be the XD Daily Creative Challenge with Andrea. And then at 2.30 Pacific time, we have Creative Encore uh, with Hutzpah Design. So lots of good stuff and uh, make sure that you uh, tune back into the second part of this as well tomorrow. So like I was saying, Cody is going to be designing a mobile app for dog friendly hiking adventures, uh, which is super exciting. I'm really excited. To yeah, get <laughs> um, it'll be fun. Yeah, I won't give away too much. I'm gonna let Cody talk a little bit about that in a second as well. Um, but before we do that, um, yeah, I just wanna say we're excited to have everyone here. Again, let us know where you're tuning in from. Um, I think we have, here we go. I'm seeing a little bit in the chat. We have Genesis, hello, happy new year. Um, Via's tuning in from Germany. Um, we have some people, someone from Turkey, Andrew says, hey, Cody. Um, and yeah, as you guys have noticed, we also have moderators in the chat. So Voodoo Val is with us today. Um, so she can also answer any questions that you have. Um, so yeah, as Cody's designing, feel free to jump in the chat, let us know, um, you know, if you have questions about what he's designing, Adobe XD as a tool, um, just general career questions, anything like that. Um, we're excited to be chatting with all of you. Um, so with that, I'll let Cody introduce himself, maybe tell us a bit about what you do and what you're going to be designing on today's stream. Thank you, Danielle. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited to be here again. Um, it's a little, yeah, a little weird being in, in the house and streaming from home, but I think uh, it's, it's going to be fun. You know, I'm excited. Uh, and I'm also excited to watch the Hoodsfoot Sisters la uh, later today. Uh, they've got amazing work. So honored to be in the same like lineup as them uh, for a stream. But uh yeah, so let's hop on in. Um, my name is Cody. I'm a graph designer based out of San Diego. Um, that's me in a circle right there. And I consider myself a multidisciplinary designer. So basically I design websites, apps. I do a lot of branding work and packaging, um, some motion graphics and animation. Um, but mostly I would say like the bulk of the work I do uh, relates to UI design and app design. And as I mentioned, I'm living in beautiful San Diego. It's uh, pretty nice out. I know it's raining in San Francisco right now, so I kind of feel uh, I'm, bu I'm bummed for you guys that you have to experience so that right now. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe, yeah, Cody, you're in San Diego. We have people, what, we have Jessica from Boston, Annie in the UK, Samuel in Los Angeles. I feel like we had someone, yeah, Marsha saying hi from Toronto, Canada. I'm here, yeah, to wow. 30 minutes south of San Francisco. And I know Jacob on our tech side, he's down in San Jose. It is foggy and yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry for you guys but you know what it's uh you know we got people all over the world so I'm sure some people are in colder weather some people are in warmer weather so yeah. we're getting a little <laughs> get a little bit of everything um and yeah so I I'm a senior designer at uh, EFM um uh, short for experiences for mankind we are a uh, creative consultancy out of downtown San Diego um been working there almost two years now and well I've been working in my home office, I guess you could call it for the last, um, I don't know, eight, nine months or whatever it is. But we still stay really connected through um, uh, Microsoft Teams. And uh, we do a lot of branding work. We do a lot of uh, retail demo applications for uh, brands like Microsoft. We do a lot of e-commerce websites. So it just ranges from all sorts of different types of projects. And uh, we've got a really talented team. And it's really nice to work with these creative people. So 
that's a little bit about me. And then I had to say hi, mom, just because I know she's probably watching. So <laughs> hi, mom. I feel like she she tuned in last time and I remember seeing like someone come on the chat kind of saying they were your mom. And I was like, I don't know if I should, if they're not really his mom, I don't know, like it'd be awkward. Yeah, right. If your People mom was pretending to be my mom on the stream, that'd be, yeah. Hilarious. <laughs> she probably would find it flattering, I think. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so Monica it, says hello. Hopefully that's she, your mom. <laughs> hi, mom. Um, so, anyways, uh, moving forward, we've got this is just some of like my recent work, recent work. Uh, Forgive me, I'm a little shy. Um, so I do, like I said, I do a little, little bit of everything, branding, UI design, packaging design. Um, this is a recent um, branding mark I made for a new company called Flow Forager. They're currently getting funded. It's a mushroom kind of tea. Um, I recently worked with uh, a lot of the other Adobe insiders this year for Adobe Max to create a mark um, for a collaborative project called All Together Now. So you can find that on Behance. Um, but yeah, I do a lot of different stuff, it's fun. We also had Samuel in the chat who mentioned, and I remember this project as well, but Samuel said, love that Tractive UI pack from a while back. I remember oh yeah, the Tractive UI kit. That was fun. Uh, that was a, a UI kit made for Adobe XD, I think a year or two ago. Um, that's also available for download, I believe on Behance. But yeah, yeah good awesome. follow. Yeah, Voodoo Val just added that in the, the chat as well, if cool. you wanna check out that old um, project. Awesome. But yeah, so for today, we're gonna be focusing on a project that, um, the idea actually was sparked by a few friends of mine, uh, John and Allie. They came up with this idea of whenever we go to like uh, national parks, there's definitely times where you can't bring your dog into the park or there's certain areas that they're restricted from because the hikes are too crazy or they're a little bit too difficult. So the idea was like, what if you made this app called National Bark where you could come in and actually leave your dog at maybe like a, a, a daycare or even uh, a dog park that somebody works at and kind of monitors your dog, but it's kind of themed like the actual national park. So for example, uh, Big Sur, maybe there's a small kind of dog park that is outside of the main area that your dogs can still enjoy the outdoors and um, you know that they're safe. So I think it's a cool idea. And I created this like badge and some other branding that we'll go into in a, in a second. Um, but the idea is to have maybe some dog parks, um, maybe some dog friendly hikes on the app and then perhaps some lodging or overnight uh, features on there. So really wanted to explore this on this stream and see what we can create. Uh, I think it'll be a lot of fun. So let's go yeah, ahead and dive in. Part. I mean, you know, I love that. I think it's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great play on words and I, can, I wish I came up with it myself, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's we'll, we'll take a look. So let me slide this over here. So I actually designed this on a live stream on my channel a few weeks ago and we kind of went over just like some of the smaller marks maybe you have like a, a tinier badge like this that could maybe even live on like a t-shirt um, a more full badge that could be on the back of a t-shirt or even it would be neat on the app if you could see different badges for each location so maybe if you're at big sur they have their own badge with this kind of bridge um, if you're maybe in like Yosemite, maybe you get half dome. So just kind of giving a little bit of personalization to each actual um, park or bark, if you want to call it. Um, and then just kind of, you know, playing with colors. So I actually kind of extracted colors that I liked. And I think these are the colors that we'll be moving forward with in the actual app. Um, I think it's helpful to do something like this before you get into design. So you sort of have, this is like a, a mood board, so to speak, of, of the colors, the look and feel, and just kind of the direction that we're going to go. Um, and I also picked some fonts that I think, well, actually just one font, uh, this font called Stolzl, I believe it's a, it's an Adobe font. Um, so just kind of laying out things and getting those like creative juices flowing so that when you actually go into XD, you kind of have a starting point. Um, so let's actually get into XD. This is great. Yeah. And Jessica in the chat mentioned that, um, they saw, they saw that you were working on this on your own stream on your YouTube channel when you were going through that when you were setting that up is that were you like picking the colors or coming up with the logo stuff or kind of what were you discussing there yeah actually I sort of had like some rough ideas in mind as to what colors I wanted to go with I know that like a lot of the hiking apps and and just uh, outdoorsy style brands use a lot of that forest screen and I wanted also something to kind of um, contrast with that so like this Kind of burnt orangey red i feel like could be a good call to action color or something you sparingly to kind of draw attention um so i think yeah on that stream we we just we 
explored a lot of those colors and just sort of the, you know, why they worked, why they why they might not work and things like that. So it was sort of a, an exploratory stream where we kind of went through together. Um, but let's see here. Oh, and one thing too, is that I actually made some rough sketches of some wires. Let me just zoom in here on this presentation. Just to also have some sort of foundation as to what maybe our UI could look like, what pages would link together. Um, you know, I think like when you first download an app, it's pretty common that you have a splash screen with a logo and then some sort of uh, messaging and like maybe telling you what the app is very briefly and a call to action to sort of serve as like a gateway to get into the app. So, you know, I'm just using these kind of rough wireframes as like placeholder for imagery. Uh, you know, then you get into like a login or sign up page, maybe a create account page. And then once you're actually in the app and you've got through that kind of onboarding, um, perhaps there's like a, a discover page where you get to see all the parks and hikes and daycares that you um, can check your dog into for the day and uh, maybe like some of the, like, I know I'm, I'm kind of referencing a lot of travel apps and, and apps that have a lot of um, different locations and different sort of uh, features as to like liking things or saving things for later or, you know, checking in. So this is sort of me just kind of feeling out what would be possible or what I should create for this app. And, um, you know, just using it as like a, as a reference point for, for when we get into the actual design. So maybe that you can like book, there's a book button, $5 an hour or something. I don't know how much it would actually be to check your dog in for the day, but we can use some kind of placeholder numbers there. Um, and then maybe there's an actual page where you, uh, you can see all the information about that particular park. So let's just go with Big Sur Forest Park. Maybe you get a rating, maybe you get that badge that we talked about and a map location to kind of show you where it's, where it's located on the map. So again, these are just kind of preliminary sketches that I think are gonna be helpful for us as we go into XD and get into like higher fidelity designs. Yeah, it's super helpful to see. I feel like a lot of us designers like still go to like paper and like um, pad to just paper and pad, paper and pencil uh, to like still do like sketches like by hand before jumping in and like doing like lo-fi designs. Um, Cause I feel like there's still like a lot of like concept work to just kind of sketch out. So it's nice to see like your thinking before you go into like the full process of designing screens. Exactly. I think it also just helps as it serves as like a backbone and, and you don't go in blind basically. So it's, it's a, it's a good thing to have in your process. It's not hundred percent necessary, but I think it's just going to make your design more um, fine tuned and, and just well thought out. Yeah. Anime says I'm liking this guys. And I saw that Paco joins. So I want to say hi to Paco. Hey, Paco. <laughs> Real quick hi. Um, but yeah, we're excited to have you all on and joining us. And, um, you know, Marsha even said like, could you have a live cam of the dogs in the parks? Question mark. So that, that would be awesome. That would be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, lots of like fun ideas. I feel like people are excited about this national bark app that you're going to be designing. It'll be fun. And so one of the things I found when I was going through Adobe stock was this um, vector illustration here, which is pretty fun. And I, I think it kind of gives that like vibe of, of it's approachable, it's friendly. Um, you know, this got a lot of nice colors that I wanted to uh, sample from for this app. So we actually have this like lighter green color here that I think I, I sampled. Yeah, down here. It's pretty close. Um, but I think this would be a fun welcoming illustration when you first download the app. And we could maybe, since it's a wider image, I think in XD we can take, we can imagine that this could be like the first screen. And then when you click to the next screen, it could like slide over here. So I know I'm kind of like crudely showing you with this rectangle, but um, let's go ahead and build our, our splash screen in Adobe XD using this illustration. And what's cool is you can actually just copy this straight into XD since it's Adobe Illustrator. We're just gonna command C this. And I'm gonna make a new document, file new. iPhone X XS 11 Pro, basically just like a mobile orientation here, ratio. Yeah, for those of you who haven't used Adobe XD before as well, it's nice because there's those presets there that give you the right artboard sizes for the type of device that you're planning to design for. So you don't have to go look it up, but you can just pre-select one of those. I'm actually going to copy this and paste it back in my previous XD file because there's one thing I wanted to share with you guys too. There's a neat plugin I found 
called um, task list. And you can go in here and actually create tasks for yourself. So in this case, I put design a splash page, design a login sign up page, just to sort of help me kind of keep um, things ordered on, on the stream here. But I, guess I could see that being very helpful just for your workflow, kind of coming in here and actually just outlining all the, the pages that you that you need for your app. There'd probably be a lot more for an app like this, but for this stream, we're gonna keep it to something minimal like this. And I'm just gonna paste this artboard in. So you can paste artboards from file to file, which is pretty sweet in XD. And then let's go back to Illustrator and just grab our vector. I'm gonna copy it. And I'm just gonna paste this in. We're just gonna size this down. And I'm thinking our logo can kind of sit at the top of this. So I might even extend this uh, background up. So you can actually edit the vectors from Illustrator in XD, which is pretty awesome, I think. So you're not kind of, uh, if, if there's any changes you need to make, you're not set in stone. And then we'll just grab our logo. I yeah, think this one will look kind of nice at the top because it's a smaller version of it. Yeah, I just want to say it's super nice that you can just copy and paste that over into like XD right now and be able to have like a really editable vector, um, like you said, versus having something that like if, as soon as you want to make an edit to it, you have to go like back over and copy and paste it. Um, but you can also like connect these things using like components. You, you could go into a library if you have like a massive project and you don't want to you want to edit it here and have it change across all the other instances. You can definitely do that, too, which is nice. Yeah, components are a lifesaver when it comes to just not having to update 20 things at once. You know what I mean? Like it's it saves you a lot of time. And um, I think we can probably make some components today too, just to kind of show how those are made. But yeah, I want to keep a nice clear space around the top of this because there are going to be um, elements that are, are native to like an iPhone or an Android device. So you want to keep a nice um, kind of negative space up there so it doesn't get too cluttered. So it would be a good idea to actually plop in some of those actual native elements if you have them from like a UI kit. But I think for today, we're just going to kind of keep that clear space. And then for the bottom piece here, I'm thinking that we actually add a color block to kind of contrast from that light. Um, we have a lot of light colors up top, but I kind of want like a darker forest green, something from our palette earlier. So what I'm going to do just really quick is I'm going to copy all these, Command C. Come back to XD and I'm just going to paste these in real quick just to get them into the software. So if I actually go to my character styles and click on this plus, it just adds them all in at once, which is kind of nice. So I can go ahead and delete those now, now that they're basically in XD. They're part of our, our design system or the beginnings of our design system, we can call it. Um, let's see. And really quick, I'm just going to delete these so we don't get too cluttered here. Delete your face, your circle face. <laughs> deleted the circle face. We don't need to see my face more than it needs to be seen, I think, you know? <laughs> I guess. Um, okay, so I'm going to grab my rectangle tool, go back to my layers panel, and just kind of drag this over here. We'll get rid of the stroke. And I'm just selecting my forest screen. I might bring this up a little bit. This little dog is so cute right here. It's a hundred percent my favorite. <laughs> just looking we, straight at you. We might have to use him again somewhere in the app, I think. Like maybe uh maybe he makes another appearance. I wonder if are there pro like profiles in your thing? Like I wonder if there's people profiles or if like the dogs have their own profiles be cute. Oh, would. that's a good idea. Yeah, I have a plugin that will apply a random image from like a random stock image of a portrait of somebody into a profile pic, but maybe there's like a dog one somewhere. I'll have to take a look. Also, then, there's the lady like holding a pug or something as well. <laughs> we could use her. Yeah, we could use her as like a profile. And so I'm just going to grab my text tool and just, there's the font Stolzel, I think it was called, right? Stolzel. Yeah, this is an Adobe font. So it's really nice because um, they sync up with all your Creative Cloud um, software. So if I'm in Illustrator or 
or XD or Photoshop, I'm gonna have all those fonts available. So that's why I like using them every now and then. So let's just say hike with peace of mind. Just thinking about like, if you're leaving your dog for the day while you're going on a trail, that's a little bit more um, difficult or not, they don't allow dogs. Um, you wanna know that your dog is taken care of and they're still having a good time. So I think that could be like a, a cool tagline. I'm not a copywriter, but I think something short and sweet like that, that kind of tells you, um, you know, what you're getting out of the app would be interesting. Unless anybody has a better better slogan on the, on the chat that they can come up with. Yeah, let us know in the chat if you have any slogan ideas for a national park. And Biola just said that Stoles is one of their go-to fonts. It's a great font. It, it kind of has that like startup-y, yet, you know, professional look and approachable, I guess you could say. And it's really legible. That's actually what this font is too for National Bark. So it all stemmed from that actual initial branding exploration. So I'm liking that sizing for the most part. I'm gonna have to change it in a little bit, but now I wanna add like a subtext, um, some sort of like smaller line that supports it. So we might come down to say 18. And I think I might go a little bit thinner on this to like a book weight just to give it a little bit more contrast and, and hierarchy. And what would our subtext be? I think something like, something that supports this dog park. So I'd say like the modern adventure dog park or something, you know. Nice. Again, where's my copywriters out there? <laughs> Well, Voodoo Val had some ideas in the chat as well about what the app could do. Just like I think Voodoo Val was saying, what if the app sends owners notifications if their dogs win awards like they're gone uh, or while they're gone, like, quote, congrats, Bowser is today's good boy. <laughs> and then the cool. was maybe a nutritional survey for owners so their dogs can be given treats. That would be awesome. There's so many great ideas that. See, we just need to make this app a real thing. And oh, <laughs> we absolutely. Can do all I feel like there's a lot of like dog lovers out there who would love to have something like this. <laughs> oh yeah. It's a huge industry for sure. And I mean, I got into this idea because I have a dog and because like we were all like my buddies and I were hanging out with with their dogs and it, they kind of brought it up and I'm like, this is something I would actually do. I actually tweaked the color a little bit to more of like a creamier kind of tan or beige. I think it fits a little bit better than just, I think the, the white color that I had was a little bit too stark. And it feels a little bit more outdoorsy, I guess. Um, so now we can actually add like a call to action. So a button. So I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool here and then just drag this over. And I think because we have this more like these rounded fonts and they're a little bit more approachable and we have these nice illustrations, I think more of like a rounded pill button would be be suitable for this. Yeah, I like it too with kind of the, the roundness of the trees in that illustration. I feel like it kind of matches that feeling as well. Yeah, that's a good point. They do kind of have the same kind of roundness. And that's kind of what you want to create when you're when you're designing. You want to create a nice, cohesive look and feel that feels like it it all works together and it's you know harmonious. Yeah, I feel like there's moments that you can pick if like if you want it to really stand out and feel different. There's like a very purposeful reason that you're doing that. Otherwise, I, I do like that kind of just overall like cohesive thinking. Like every element, whether it's like the button or the typography or the colors, like you're really thinking through why you're choosing those things and how it all comes together for the app. Absolutely. And so I'm just picking um, a font here. I don't know if I like the medium. Let's see, maybe regular. And I might bring it down a little bit to like a 16. So it's a little bit smaller than the actual body copy. And I think I want like a little little arrow to kind of say like, actually show you like, let's get started, you know, like a um, little directional arrow. So we can go to one of our other plugins see here I'm in libraries so plugins is this little kind of Lego looking icon at the bottom here and I'm gonna go back and we're gonna go to icons for design 
let's just type arrow in. So you can see we have a lot of different icons to choose from here. Just got to find the right one. Maybe this one. This one has kind of like a rounded stroke. So I think that could fit well with our rounded uh, look and feel here. No, I I'm, I'm gonna lock this to like maybe 15. And what's cool, this is a stroked icon, so I can actually change the size of it. If I go to the size of the stroke right here, I think something like a two might be a little bit more suitable for this. So it's not too like chunky. Yeah, I kind of like matching the weight of the, the copy that you have there a little bit as well, like that smaller copy versus it being like really chunky, like the more header copy there. Yeah, they kind of feel like they, they work well together that way. Because if it, if it outweighs it, it seems like it's competing a little bit too much. I'm just going to group those and then just center them within. And I'm actually going to make this a component. So right click, make component. Let's just call this BTN start. It's good to label your, your layers if you can, just so that when you go back into your file later, you kind of, you're not working with all this mess. You know, it's a little bit more organized and something that's, you know, like you gotta like design for your future self almost, you know, or even like a future designer coming into the file. Sometimes it, you know, gets crazy, like with deadlines and things like that. You can't always make it as clean as you want, but it's just good practice to kind of organize things when you can. Totally agree. I feel like it's crazy to like jump into a file that's just like bananas. Like if there's no method to the madness and like you get a file from someone else and it hasn't been like nothing's been labeled. There's yeah. like 20 versions of everything. You're like, where do I go in this artboard? And with XD, there's now right there's collaborative files. So you, like you can you know, be in a file with someone else and be working real time with multiple designers in a file. So organization is like pretty key. I'll be honest though, like I do not label everything. Like I'm not perfect on that, but I have found specifically, like you were talking about the button component. I found that I have been labeling those really specifically because also now that there's like the different states, like button states that you can make, um, which I found really helpful for like um, the static state versus like hover versus like when you actually have an active state, uh, labeling those is really helpful. So I know which one to actually select. <laughs> oh, for sure. It's, it saves you. Oh, I didn't even group this correctly. So let me copy this. Yeah. Voodoo yeah, with kind to the you in, of the future. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So yeah, especially since this is a component, we want everything to be labeled pretty, like I might even label this background, this background. We'll just call this arrow. Doesn't necessarily need to be grouped. Okay. And Dimitri in the chat is just joining us. Hello. And yeah, for any of the rest of you who are just joining us, Cody is designing an Adobe XD mobile app for um, dog friendly hiking adventures. <laughs> does it I almost think too, like, we can add some like actual like pine trees because these are kind of just like they look like they're from a regular park, which they're nice, but maybe we can add a little bit of po uh, pine trees in the background. So I'm just going to use the pen tool real quick and just I'll make one of them. And then we can just duplicate it. Just something really simple and kind of it's going to be kind of light in the background anyways, so it doesn't need to be. You could spend hours illustrating if you want, but we're going to do this just for the for the sake of being quick. Kind of like a little Christmas tree almost, you know? And I'm just going to sample this color and then just bring it down a little bit. And let's make the trunk real quick, just a square or a rectangle. I believe we can unite these up here. You kind of have the same like uh, Pathfinder tools that you do in uh, Illustrator, which is nice. So I'm just going to hit add and it combines it all into one. Nice. And you've been color sampling a lot. Which um, hotkey are you using? Because I know there's also like by the fill colors, there's like the eyedropper and you can click on that or you can use the shortcut, which I think you've been using as well. I'm actually a little old fashioned. I go, I use the color. Uh, 
I use the eyedropper, I believe. Oh, do you? Oh, I've been just, yeah, I've just been going like this. There is a shortcut for it, but I, I forget. Yeah, Command I, I think is the. Command I. I'm not that cool, you know? I just, uh, I'm, a, I'm <laughs> an old school. I feel like I color all the time. Like I'm like picking from the other pieces, but. <laughs> it helps, yeah. If you're, if you're sampling from the same um, colors, that, that's the best way I think to do it because you know it's probably gonna work if it's from the same color family, essentially. Might move this cloud up a little bit or over. Those yeah, I think definitely help make it feel more like a, a national park versus you're right, like kind of a standard park. Yeah, and that's what's cool too, is like we can do whatever we want with these illustrations. Like it doesn't have to be, I think like Adobe Stock has a lot of like great illustrations and photography like this that are a good starting point, but adding a little bit of extra um, modification on top of it makes it feel a little bit more of your own. And, um, you know, they're not, to me at least, they're not meant to be used exactly as they're, as they're built. Sometimes they could, but I like to add a little bit of personalization when I can. So I think that works, like that helps a little bit. And I'm just gonna call this splash, I'm gonna label my airport splash we're going to be making more airports and we don't want to get, we don't want to get confused um okay so let's duplicate this artboard and bring it over here and i think this is going to be our like sign in or create account page so i'm just going to call it sign in or create for now and because i duplicated all the same elements i should be able to Go to my prototype tab. Actually, let me move this over because we want this to slide. And if I go to my prototype tab and click on this, this button and drag this over here, we basically linked the two artboards together. So it's basically telling XD that these two are connected now. And I want my trigger to be, we're doing a little prototyping here. So if I, if I hit tap, if I tap on the button, Instead of transition, we want this to auto animate. And so basically in the starting position on artboard A, we have the illustration on the left, but then on this artboard, we actually have it shifted over to the right. So with the auto animate, it should just kind of slide it right over. So let's see what happens when we preview that. Yeah, so it's a little quick, but we can fine tune that. If I click on the same element with this little blue line, um, see here we have easing. I might do like an ease in and ease out. So it kind of comes off of curve of a curve of, a, of an arc in a sense. Like if you look at like animation, like fundamentals and you see like your curvature of your arc, we're kind of making it so that it, when it comes out, it's going really, really slow. There's like more frames and then towards the middle it gets faster. And then when it gets to the resting point, it kind of slides in slowly. Um, so let's see what happens. Let's do, Let's do that. Let's give it even more time too. So a longer duration, maybe try 0.8. And see that feels a little bit more like buttery and smooth and a little bit more professional, you know? Whereas before it was a little jarring. We kind of got there too quickly. Preview yeah, this I feel like you appreciate that there's like the animation that's happening because you can like see it kind of happening really quickly, which is nice. And yeah, for those of you that miss it, like clicking that plus button at the very top will help you to preview the prototype that you have um, and that you can start to click through and like see all of the animations that you have in that prototyping mode. Yeah, right up here, that play button. Desktop preview. Um, I think what could also be cool is as you get to this next screen, we could actually have the logo shrink down a little bit and come up here and then we can make way for like say a, a back button because at this point I want this information to get wiped off screen as well so I'm just going to slide it off screen this is why okay I'm just gonna group that into text. I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna copy this because it's important that you have the same names for your layers. 
Yeah, especially in auto animate. Auto animate is basically looking at the layers specifically, so you have to have those those naming pieces correct. There we go. Well, I don't know what's going on with that, but let's see what happens. I actually don't mind the fade. Yeah. Because it's like not too many things are moving at once. So we're just going to go with that. We're going to go with the fade. Right. So yeah, and, and then, I find that when you're doing like the prototyping mode, I'm constantly going back to like the preview and just kind of like feeling things out. Like, okay, do I like that amount of timing? Like, is this kind of the right, like what I'm going for and kind of going back and forth like you just did and like playing with that, I think is the right way to do it. Yeah, you kind of got to find, yeah, just kind of play with it, explore and then see what works, see what doesn't work. Like it's it's a creative playground to kind of have some fun and just see, you could, you could find new interactions that you never would have thought of. So I'm gonna make ungroup this component. I'm gonna make it a new component. We're just gonna call it sign in, button sign in. And I'm just gonna change the label to sign in. This is assuming that you already have an account, uh, account created and you just kind of wanna quickly sign in. And I might just make this a little bit wider. And if you select both elements, so the sign in and the background, we can just go to our center justification up here, and perfectly center it there. And I'm gonna move it to the top right here. And there's gonna be people that don't have an account yet. So we need to have a call to action for them to create an account. So I'm just gonna duplicate this holding a uh, alt and shift. I think it's option if you're on PC. And let's just write create account. And I think I don't want these buttons to be the same color because right now I don't, my eye doesn't know where to go. Like I feel like that it needs a different treatment as like a secondary um, color. So I think what we can do is we can grab our background and again, just sample this kind of forest green. Maybe just like bring it up in value a little bit. So it's, it's a little bit more subtle. And I wanna make this color the same as my text over here. So I need to add this new color. I don't think I ever added that. Let's go back to our libraries. Yeah, that what, like sort of light green. Well, this one's more of like a kind of sand, not sandstone, but like um, a lighter beige. Yeah. There we go. So now they're, it's a little bit more balanced on the page and it feels like they're not competing as much, I guess. There are people that are just gonna wanna skip past this. They're like, you know what? I wanna explore the app. I don't wanna create an account. I don't want to sign in. I just want to see what this app's all about. And I think it's important. Let me, uh, looks like my camera just went out. So I got to switch over real quick. No worries. While you're doing that, I know Tina just commented in the chat that um, the illustration and style is, and then I'm going to have to say the emoji, but like the little heart emoji where the eyes are the hearts, um, like smiley face. But um, yeah, Tina, shout out to Tina. Tina's actually on my team in Adobe. So it's nice, nice. tuning in. <laughs> welcome, Tina. Yeah. Welcome. So we had to go to my kind of built in uh, webcam for this, but sometimes the, the, the camera overheats. So. Nothing Very we purposeful. Fix. We're just switching the angle, getting like a side view of you now. <laughs> Very, yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay, so now that we have that, I think, so we need to add that skip button that I was talking about. So let's just copy this text, duplicate it, or just paste it, and just write skip. And I don't think this button necessarily needs a container because we don't really want people to skip, but we need to give them the option. We don't want to create any dead ends or just any anxiety within our app. You know, this is supposed to be a fun, approachable app and we want people to have the ability to, you know, move past if they like. So I think giving your users more choices is a good thing and it allows them to kind of have the freedom to navigate the app the way that they want to.
Let's see how these are linking real quick. Nice. I like that little subtle fade. It's not um, it's not overwhelming. We already have this movement up top, so I think uh, this is nice and subtle. And yeah, I do the auto animate actually on that logo feels really nice too, like really subtle, but just kind of. I think it also like really accentuates the animation that you have, where it was just kind of sliding before, but you notice a lot of like the logo getting smaller. It's like so easy. Yeah. I cook it up. <laughs> you don't have to do anything. Yeah, it's it's nice and subtle. Yeah, and you're right. It kind of draws your eye. Like now you're entering a new page. It uh, it just kind of gives you a little bit of uh, something that's pleasant and whimsical to look at. So this tree is kind of giving me some problems. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna delete it. Cutting it down. <laughs> Cut down the tree. Deleted, yeah. <laughs> Genesis in the chat says that um, that was nice around about the animation as well. So I think this. Oh, thanks, Jenna. By the way, I think we can have this kind of like slide in. So I'm putting it on both artboards but I'm going to like change the uh, appearance of it. So it's 0% opacity here. And then when we get here, it just kind of slide up a little bit. So let's see if I did that right. Yeah, see, so it's kind of moving up with the logo. So it's uh, kind of following the same animation path, which is kind of nice. And now we know what page we're on. So this is a, I guess it wouldn't be called create account. This would be, um, let's just say hi there. Cody, because your phone should have this information. It feels more a, personal too. Yeah. Double check that real quick. Yeah, see that feels like, I feel like warm inside looking at that because it's, it feels <laughs> like personalized for me. And there's a, these cute little doggies can't go wrong you have dogs i mean <laughs> i think the other nice thing is I, i've seen a lot of people like when you think about designing like splash screens and things like that like you could do something really simple and i and i feel like that can look nice as well but and i feel like this is showing how if you think through all the little details like you can create something that just gives that little extra as well which um you know is really nice and what i feel like when you think about the apps that you really love or the ones that you think are like really beautifully designed there's like these small details those mm -hmm. small things that make a difference and so like you know we've been on for a little while and you've made like you know just working on these two screens but it's all those details that make it just like so clean <laughs> yeah it feels like it was made for you or like you 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 know, you were um, at the forefront of the thought of like the creators that made this like they're um, they're building a special app just for you. Yeah. Yeah. Carmen says hi um, in the chat. And um, let's see, we have uh, George who says this is amazing. Marsha says it's it's friendly. Um, so a lot of comments in the chat around that as well. Awesome. I'm glad, uh, glad you guys are liking it. Yeah. <laughs> That's good feedback. Um, so let's see. I think um, we can create a discover page now. Actually, no, we need to make one more page because if you do want to create an account, um, you have to have the ability to either A, maybe like create an account with your phone number, B, create account with your, um, say maybe like login with Facebook or something like that, maybe another social media app, or C, maybe login with your email, or even perhaps because this is a dog app, Maybe there's a, a, a login with like Chewy.com, you know, like I know that's like a popular uh, brand for, for dogs. So maybe if you've already created an account with them, you can just integrate it within this experience. So let's just duplicate this. That sounds great. And while you're doing that, I'm going to say hi. I know we've had a couple new people joining the chat. Aaron, hi. Pamela says they're joining hi from Peru. Um, Carmen says this is awesome. For those of you who are just tuning in, um, Cody is designing an Adobe XD uh, mobile app for dog friendly hiking adventure. Um, and so, you know, that's also the cue of why we have these amazing dog illustrations and talking about designing an app for dogs, not that the dogs would use it themselves, but <laughs> um, yeah. I'm sure somebody could train their dog to use this app. It would know? be kind of great. Yeah, I did see this dog that I follow on Instagram. That's like this corgi that was doing these like exercises with its legs, kind of like 
<laughs> the most adorable thing but it went to get it was like an ad for like rx bars or something and it like they trained the dog to go like get grab one of the bars and like bring it back it was so cute <laughs> i gotta i gotta train my dog coda to do stuff like that yeah i was gonna ask have you trained him to do any special tricks he can do like a he can do like a twirl so if you say twirl he'll he'll spin around um he will sit right like now. all like all good boys do um he will speak if i tell him to speak or if i ask him to speak and then I will also have him lay down. I'm trying to get him to do like a like a rollover kind of thing, but he doesn't really like that one yet. So, okay. So now I'm also just making an maybe like a third style of a button. Sign in with phone number. I feel like this is a popular one, um, as opposed to creating an account through like social media or. Um, you know, giving your email, it just feels like the more, at least to me, it feels like an easy way to create an account these days. Just type in your phone number. And then um, let's see, let's do like the sign it, sign up with Chewy. I think I have the vector logo of this. Let's see. Yeah, so I should be able to just drag in this SVG that I have here directly in. Yep, cool. And because it is vector, we can scale it down. It'll retain its crispness. I don't know if crispness is a word, but it sounds right. And then we're just gonna make it the same color just so it fits within our branding. And I might just uh, slide this over a little bit. And what do you think? Do you think it needs to say Chewy or just the logo itself is enough? Let us know what you think in the chat about if we need both. I'm leaning towards not having both because I feel like I read it as Chewy twice. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I feel like when I typically see like signing with Google or signing with Facebook, I feel like they just use the logo typically. Um, but it's already a well-established brand. So it's like, there's no need to add, add that extra text layer. That makes sense. Visually it looks nicer too. I think you're right. Instead of Chewy Chewy. <laughs> Sign up with Chewy Chewy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you could. Marsha in the chat says, just logo, Voodoo Val, um, and Laura also say, just the logo is enough. So I think there's some consensus there. Cool. Kara as well, logo. Awesome. And then um, let's just write, sign up with email for one. And then maybe we actually put a little um, kind of mail icon here. So I'm going to go back to my icons, just type in mail. Perfect. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of people in the chat agreeing that just having that logo once seems like more than enough. And otherwise, you might get some questions. I know uh, Elevation has been talking about in the chat. You might get people, don't put it twice, people might flood your emails about it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I agree. So just a little mail icon looks kind of neat in here. I might bring this down to two points to kind of match our, our font weight again, as we discussed earlier. Whenever I say disgust, I feel like a professional, you know? <laughs> what? What do you mean? I just feel like it's a very adult word, like disgust. Like, let's have a discussion. Classy, so. yes. <laughs> All right, so we just need to make sure that these layers are labeled correctly. So let's do button, sign in, or sign up, phone. Do button, sign up, Chewy. Not chewy chewy. <laughs> and then button sign up email. Remember, we're designing for our future selves here. 
being kind to ourselves <laughs> in our files and being organized yeah cool and then we're just going to label this sign up or no just sign up and then i actually made a mistake here this should be sign up with phone number And then I think we need a back button to get back to this page in case you, or here needs a back button, I think. I don't know if you necessarily need to get back to the splash, but maybe somebody wants to see the splash page again. So we'll put it on both. Yeah, I think it's nice. Like you were talking about before, it's kind of like not having any of those dead ends. Like I think a lot of us start to design as we're like designing the screens, like moving forward through the app, but always thinking about like, where are those moments where someone might need to go back or want to go back and like making sure you have the right UI to allow a user to do that. It's nice. Cause you have the, the skip button to go forward, but an arrow can help you to, to go back when you need. Yeah. Maybe there's some neat, like maybe this is actually animated and it's a cool, like this guy's actually playing with his dog and this dog is kind of like sticking its tongue out or something. Like maybe you do want to go back and revisit that little moment, you know? So I think giving them the option doesn't hurt. I'm just going to round these to kind of match everything else we've been doing. Maybe like a 15 point. And then let's see, I want to go find another arrow. So we have this like smaller arrow that could fit within a pill button like this, but I want to have more of just like a kind of like Chevron arrow for these back buttons because they're doing different things sort of. I mean, they're both taking you to different pages, but I think top navigation could have its own sort of uh, set set rules. Copy that. For more in the chat was saying, I love these illustrations. Uh, who's the designer? And I know you mentioned maybe you got it from Adobe Stock. Is that right? Yeah, we can find out. Yeah, we can check it out. But I agree. I mean, the more I feel like we've been staring at it, the more I find like little details that I didn't notice before that just are so cute with like the dog with the bone in his mouth. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a cute little cute cute little app. It's supposed to make you feel good and make your dog feel good. So, so I'm just grouping these together. We can make this a component as well. Let's call it button back. Okay, I'm just gonna copy this, paste it in place. So it should just fade in. Let's go ahead and preview this again. Yeah. Nice. Now we should probably make it actually do what it's supposed to do. So I'm selecting it with the prototype tab. And I'm just gonna drag this arrow back to the original artboard. And we can keep the same properties, the same behaviors, I believe. I think it'll look nice. Let's see. Get started. Go back. Yeah, I think just like a reverse of what we saw before is kind of nice. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this. So let's go through that flow real quick. Get started. I guess we didn't link our um, create account button yet, did we? So let's grab that, drag it over here. This could probably just be a transition since nothing re is really moving on the page. If, if we had like a wider illustration, we could go even further, but for this, we're just gonna, we're just gonna go to a transition. Yeah, that works for me. This is looking great. Catherine in the chat was saying, cannot believe how fun this is. I'm new to XD and was panicking. I'd never learned how to use this. It looks so amazing. I'm glad that you're no longer panicking as much. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely, I feel like once you start diving in, it's really easy to learn in there. Like, especially the prototyping modes makes things a lot kind of simpler to, to figure out how to start to make your designs come to life. Um, so I think that that's really nice. 
Um, and then Laura, just to get back to you, I know Cody was saying that this illustration was from Adobe Stock. You were asking who the artist was. That would be Irina Strelnikova, um, who designed the dog park illustration. Yeah, she did an amazing job. I love this. I love this style. And really quick too, we can um, we can actually switch over to my my phone because XD actually syncs with your mobile device. Um, if you have it either plugged in with a USB or if you have a um, if you have this saved to the the cloud, um, you can actually preview what this would look like on your actual phone to see maybe if the button sizes are working or you know if everything's laying out. Because sometimes you can be designing XD and then you actually preview it live and you're like, oh, this doesn't look exactly right. Like maybe something's off. So um, I should be able to switch over to my phone here. And we can see how this is laying out. Yeah, there we go. So I can actually kind of click through this and just see. So far, it seems like it, the buttons, I made them kind of big, but I like that about it. I think it makes it very clear to see. And, um, you know, I might want to make these ones a little bit wider now that I'm looking at them. It's so clean, but I, I mean, it's, that's the nice thing I feel like also though about going to mobile, like you're saying, like if you can plug it in and you can actually feel the advantage of like, how big is this? How small is it? Does the placement feel right? Versus like when you're designing on desktop. So this is really cool to see on mobile. And do you see how like on the actual logo, it's getting a little close to that notch up there. We should be able to just kind of live update this because it's basically mirroring what you're seeing in XD. So if I just bring this down a little bit, it should update. It might take a little bit because we're streaming, but it should actually move it down. Let's see. Maybe I didn't move it down for far, far enough here. That's definitely one of those things like the notch in iOS is like that new thing that we've always had to now design around and it's hard to remember to make sure that you have the right placement for. But again, yeah, like bringing it over to your actual phone and taking a look at what things look like will help you to like have moments like that where you're like, oh, shoot, this is <laughs> this is too close. I got to move this one element. Yeah, it's it's really helpful just to be able to preview things and even like give it to one of your friends to kind of preview and have them kind of click through a an actual flow and get real time feedback. I think that really helps inform your design decisions as you move forward. So I'm just going to switch back to my desktop real quick. Sounds good. Brandon in the chat is saying this looks uh, lit, Cody, as expected. And then <laughs> Elevation was asking, what app is this that you're using to preview it? Um, that's what I want to know. Um, the actual app that I'm using to preview the XD file is actually XD. So there's a mobile app. Um, that you can install. If you have XD on your desktop, you should be able to download it for free on your mobile device. And you just have them open at the same time and you're able to kind of go through like that. And it's cool because you have all your, you could have multiple cloud documents on there. So you could have like as many projects as you want really. Yeah, it's great. Plus, I think the main advantage is also just like the real time. Like you said, you check your phone to see how the design's coming along. And then when you notice that there's maybe something you want to tweak real time, you just kind of change it in XD and see that preview come up, which is nice. Cool. So we've got some nice pages here. Um, I think moving forward, we can go into that discover page. So once you're actually in the app and you want to see like a feed of Let's just go with parks for now. I'm just gonna duplicate this artboard. Let's just get rid of everything for now. And I'm in prototype mode. I'm just gonna go back to my design tab up here. Let's just call this discover. So for this page, I'm thinking we can use sort of like this lighter beige color as our background. So not like a stark white, but something with a little bit of color. So I'm just gonna select my actual artboard and you can come over here to appearance and just change the color. I might bring it up a little bit. So it's just a slightly off white. That feels a little bit better. 
And then we can actually add in a profile image. So I'm gonna grab a circle and just drag this. And you can also, when you're designing, I probably should have went over this earlier, but you can add a grid. So you can kind of see, you can make things, make sure that uh, your elements are lined up on the artboard. And you can um, actually customize how this grid lays out. So if you want to add more columns or width, like it's all accessible here. So maybe we want our gutter width to be like 15 or something like that. And we want say six columns. You have full control over that, which is really nice. Yeah, I know grids was like the one thing. So Adobe XD has been evolving over time and there's always new features and new updates that are coming. But I feel like grids, when we didn't have grids at the very beginning, was something we heard from like so many users. Everyone was like, where are grids? I want grids. <laughs> well, they're, yeah. they're finally there. You can finally start to use them. Um, but yeah, if there are, for like people who are watching right now, if there are other features or things that you still want to see in XD, um, you can also head over to like Adobe XD.ud Uservoice.com, and there um, we take a look um, as Adobe and the the team looks at all the different requests that you guys put in, and you can get a sense of like what is in the works, like a feature that's been started, or if like a feature is under review. Um, there's transparency there as to like all the different pieces, and you can kind of thumbs up ones that you're interested in. So like when people are really wanting grids, like that got bumped up a ton. And so the team was able to say, okay, like we really need to prioritize like getting grids in this app. <laughs> yeah, having that feedback from the community is, is super awesome. And the fact that the XD team, they literally use that feedback and, and go in and make updates to the software and you see updates every month. So that's one of my favorite things about this particular program is just that I know that it's, it's evolving and changing and becoming even stronger. Um, month after month so so here's another plugin uh, this is ui faces we talked about it earlier um, if i open up this you have to have a like a shape selected it won't really work on an artboard see how it says artboard is not supported you want to click your um your shape that you want to fill and then let's just say let's go to let's just click all these i don't think we need to pick one select photos. I'm actually going to apply randomly. So you can select from a list of, or a grid of different people. Let's just go with a random one though. It's a little bit more fun that way to like not know what you're going to get. Yeah, I feel like also like the plugin is the plugins in general, like you can check out Adobe XD's plugins, but having stuff like this is so nice in terms of shortcuts. Cause I feel like before you'd always have to like go in Google or like go find all of these images that you could use for people's profiles, or maybe you have a repository you always use, but you'd have to drag in them all yourself manually. So it's really nice to just have a plugin that you can like one click start to get all of these things just like populated in. Yep, it's just a time saver, you know, if, you, if you're kind of in a pinch and you don't want to have to go source those images, just uh, get a plugin. She kind of looks like Audrey Hepburn, so we're going to we're gonna name her Audrey. <laughs> there you go. Got the black uh, and white. <laughs> and then I need to add, you can also add your colors. You can add your colors to this little um, color picker here. So just another place to have it. I like adding it there when I can. Yeah, I feel like the to the left hand side, like the assets panel, I feel like it's nice in terms of like when you're sharing a file with someone else, like lots of other people, they can go to see like the the overall like brand styling that you have and like the shared style. But I agree, I find like whenever I'm adding in the color picker, it's just for like ease of use. Like whenever I'm going over there and I like quickly want to go, like I don't always have that panel open on the left hand side. So sometimes it's just more like a shortcut. Exactly. And you're right, just having this open is a nice way to kind of just quickly glance at all of your elements and components and colors and styles and typography. It's just nice to have like a cheat sheet of everything you're working with. So we're gonna put Audrey there. You have Audrey and Marsha in the chat was saying, would you have your dog in the circle? <laughs> I mean, going back to our earlier conversation. Maybe we should try that. Maybe we should try that. <laughs> Maybe we can actually, um, let's take that little pug or let, Let's take the pug. 
Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> So I'm just double clicking on the actual sh ellipse shape and just pasting the pug. I might actually have to remask this because it's a plugin. So it did something different there. So I think I'm doing like 60 by 60 for my width and height. And then if I shift clicked, shift click both of these object, wait a minute. Can you mask vectors? Um, okay, so I needed to put the I needed to put the vector behind the actual circle, and then I'm going to make another circle behind this uh, this one so that I can have that background color. Coda's Coda just woke up. I just woke up, could hear the little puppy steps. <laughs> I think we're just gonna keep this pug's name off to be Audrey. <laughs> I mean, that dog is hilarious. The tongue sticking out. Also in the chat, really funny. Clever was saying the, uh, let's see, here we go. The national bark rules titled quote, doggy do and doggy don'ts. <laughs> <laughs> very, very clever, clever. <laughs> I like it. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of it. <laughs> Boy. Okay, so now we have our little Audrey pug. I'm just gonna group those together. Just to keep them neat. We'll just say Audrey. Maybe if you click that, you could actually go to your profile or your dog's profile. And then I actually want to add sort of like a headline here that kind of lets you know what page you're on and what the things are that you can do here. So let's just copy this since we've already had it made. And another good idea too, since we sort of have been developing our, our type treatments and our different um, font weights, we can go into our character styles. And if you select your item here, you can actually just add and so see it's, it uh, actually inherits all that. So it says regular 36 point Stolzel. So that's another nice little thing about XD is you can keep all of your, you know, your different characteristics of your um, text and your colors and all that kind of managed in one spot. And then I'm just gonna copy this, paste it over here. And maybe we go to that like forest green color. Yeah, I like that. I think the other nice thing about character styles is it's kind of like we were talking about before with components. It's like, as you start to have like a larger file and you have all of these, um, you know, the type that you've started to use across your entire file, if you decide later on, like you, or you get feedback from, you know, whoever your client that they want to switch it. You don't have to go in manually. If you have that character style, you can just edit the character style on that left, um, assets panel and it'll change across your entire document. So again, like one of those really nice lifesavers, um, it can come in handy in that way too. Absolutely. I use it all the time because it's just, like I said, it's like a little cheat sheet. You know, you have all your stuff in one spot. So I'm just going to say here, discover endless possibilities because why not? And it's more play on words and national bark is sort of a play on words. So I think we got to, we got to, uh, maybe I could spell possibilities correctly first. Possibilities. It's hard once there's the paw in there. I can't unsee. I'm like, I don't know how to spell possibilities anymore. <laughs> I know it kind of, it kind of breaks it, huh? Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Plus I'll say a quick hi to, we have Kiko who's, um, saying happy new year from Brazil. Um, thanks for joining us and mentioned it's a nice live for beginners in XD. Yeah. So it sounds like, you know, we have a couple ranging people on the stream joining us who are maybe like just getting started in XD or maybe like you're more proficient. I feel like having Cody on is great. I know a lot of you have been saying that in the chat, like Cody is fire. There's been a lot of fire emojis in a good way. I don't know about that. Uh, <laughs> 
but I just thought you should know because Cody can't see the chat. So I just wanted to relay that to Cody for a second. So he knows that he's, he can feel some of the love that you guys have been spreading to him um, during the chat. But yeah, for those of you who are just joining us again, like Cody's working on this mobile app called National Bark amazing, um, which is basically yeah, dog friendly hiking adventures on an application and designing in Adobe XD. Well, thank you, everyone. I appreciate the fire emojis, even though I can't <laughs> see them. Um, I think it'd be too much to multitask if I had to read and design and talk. So um, I, I, do, yeah, I really do appreciate it. So I broke this up into like two um, lines here just because it was feeling a little long and it was hard. It was kind of breaking weird. So I think just having the kind of like an eyebrow text up here where it says discover and then you have your endless possibilities feels a little bit more, more, more balanced. And then, so this is where, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry, Freddie, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, Kara in the chat was just asking, like um, said your website is amazing uh, and was asking what you use to build it. Oh, thanks. I actually haven't touched my website in probably a year and a half, but I, I appreciate that. Um, I think I built that's in Squarespace. I use uh, Squarespace to build that, but I'm actually kind of wanting to design XD and see if I can uh, actually build it out, develop it out. So we'll see. I, I need a new, I need a new look. So yeah, I feel like a lot of designers like we don't touch our portfolios for a while. Sometimes like you just start building it out, and then there's it's a whole effort. It's like its own project for sure. It really is. You update your entire website and your portfolio. Um, but like when was the last time you updated your portfolio? <laughs> a lot as recent as you. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, uh, yeah, a couple years ago. I feel like. I mean, I've added things to it, but I haven't. I haven't done like a total redo of it. I think mine is using Adobe Portfolio. So Adobe can, you know, if you have your, um, you can check it out as well. But Adobe Portfolio also is a way of, other than Square pay, Squarespace to make a portfolio. Check that out. Yeah. There's so many Adobe softwares that I can't keep up sometimes, but I use like the same like three or four every day. So, okay, cool. So we've got our title here and I want to add just like different categories like we talked about. So you have like parks, hikes, or maybe like overnight or lodging. So I'm just going to take this Audrey text, copy it, paste it, and just bring it down. I think it's just better to use I don't want 12 different styles for this app. I think just keeping to a minimum of like three to four would be right. So just taking this, just writing parks. And this will be this will be the selected state. We're gonna have all these um, different grid of images. So I think for our selected state of parks, we can go to that kind of like burnt orange kind of reddish color. I don't know if I, I did bring it in. Yeah, it's in my, um, up here. So I'm just gonna click that. And then let's just add it to this um, color picker as well. So we have it handy there. I like how this artboard, when you like transition out of kind of like the splash screen and sign and stuff, which is sort of like all the greens and tones, there's like a very stark difference in terms of like what you see kind of once you get in, cause it kind of helps you to make that transition mentally as well of like, hey, I'm now like in the app. Yeah, it gives you like a breath of fresh air a little bit because you are looking at a lot of kind of those foresty green colors and you're kind of in this world. And then when you get to this page, it's like, all right, now we're showing you the actual content of the app. So I think that's, I'm glad that, that, that you feel that way. It's, I guess it's working then. And so typically in the past, I've done underlines for selected states, which I think are still really cool. Um, I think on the last stream that we did, I might've done something like this. We did that seafood app. But um, I know like another trend I've been seeing and I, I haven't seen any like research on whether or not it's effective or not, but it still looks kind of nice. It's just doing like a little dot. It's a little bit more subtle, but because this is um, a red color, it kind of punches off the page a little bit. So I think we can get away with it for something like this. But that's one of those things that, again, you'd want to like test on your device, make sure you can hand it around to a few people and see if like this reads that it's, you know, the active link. And then we'll duplicate this. And I think this will go back to 
this color. Maybe we even kind of bring this down. I, I might sample this kind of like lighter beige color. Sorry, Coat is eating in the background, so you might hear him chewing on some food. <laughs> and then this could say hikes. I think we're getting the full like audio sensory experience here. We're like designing for a dog app and then we have a dog making noise in the background, so. Absolutely, it, it's <laughs> necessary, right? I mean, yeah. our other special guest in the in the background. Maybe yeah. he'll make an appearance at the very end or maybe on day two if he's like very Yeah, maybe we'll, maybe we'll throw him in here. <laughs> um, so hikes and then what did I say? Overnight. So. And I think this could even like bleed off maybe. Like if we wanted to have more than like three, it might be able to fit. I think we're going to make it fit. But if you had more, I think it's okay to kind of bleed it off the page and have it more of like a sliding carousel. But I think, I think that works. And I'm going to group these, say parks, and then group this. It's interesting, like what you're doing with the selected state of like, not just choosing like a, a more vivid color, a different color to have it be like, hey, the parks is selected, but having that circle is interesting. I've definitely seen the hairline that you talked about before, like underneath to say, hey, this is the selected section. Um, the circle is interesting. And I'm curious to see how it comes out in the rest of the design too. Because I think typically I've also seen that used mainly on like no, when you have like a notification or like you want to capture like a user's eye to like, hey, this section, like go click on this one. You have right. the new stuff there or something like that. Um, I've seen the circle used in that way too. Yeah, totally. That's why I'm still like, I'm not fully convinced yet, but it's something that I want to like see if it reads. It's definitely a trend. So I don't think every trend should be followed, but I think it's worth exploring, you know, just to see if it, if it holds any weight. So we'll, we'll see. And I'd love to know what, what everybody else thinks too. Yeah, let us know in the chat what you think about the um, the circle dot for selection under parks. Um, if you like that or if you think a hairline makes more sense, just kind of thinking through would be interesting. Cool, so I'm just pulling up my grids again just to make sure that we have a nice kind of spacing throughout. And I might even see if I can push these out a little bit more. Let's try like a 25. I think it needed a little bit more um, on the actual margin here. And that's something you can kind of like fine tune as you're, like we're not fully committed to this just yet. All right, and that's what I like too, is like when you're spacing things out next day, you get these kind of guides that let you know, like, okay, this is 36 pixels. I like to go for more, like more round numbers, like 40. It's just, your developers are gonna love that if you can actually build in a more consistent way. Absolutely, and the snapping is super helpful. I feel like just to, so you can easily feel when you kind of are finding that similar pixel length that you have on other places, um, really nice. Definitely. So I'm gonna turn my grid back on and then I'm gonna make the first card here. I'm just kind of dragging it down, get rid of this border. Turn this off now. And let's just make it a different color so I can see what we're doing here. I want to round these uh, these corners as well because again, we want that um, we want the look and feel to be cohesive and also just feel like it's kind of got that round, approachable kind of look and feel. So if you select your object, you get these little like circles within the corners. I'm gonna just bring this down. I believe by default, it just if you grab one of them, it it brings them all at the same time. If you want to just say one or the, these top two, you'd have to go into this, um, I think it's called a yeah, different radius for each corner and you can type in your value. So say five, you can see that it rounded just that corner. But for in this case, we want them all to be rounded. So I'm just gonna bring these to, I don't know, like 15. I think we use 15 for this one. Yeah, okay. So they're kind of sharing the same radius roundness 
I guess you'd call it. Yeah, the consistency is super nice. And yeah, if you go around to just do like, you just want like the top ones to be round and you want the bottom ones to be still, you know, straight edges, you can do that like Cody was showing. And it just goes around clockwise, I believe, right? So starting with the left top corner to the next corner on the right hand side and then it goes down and around. Down and around. Down and around. And so because we have that grid, we have this nice spacing here. So we're just going to go with that as far as our spacing goes. And I think cool, like something else that could be interesting is these cards can kind of be offset. So if there's like for any um, for any cards that have like longer titles, they can kind of flex down and be a little bit taller. Um, it just kind of creates a little bit more like variety on the page and just see it feels a little bit more dynamic. I was chasing his own tail now. <laughs> Could hear a little bit of like the yeah. sound. Like, oh, what's going on? People are probably wondering what is happening down there. <laughs> so good. Um, also, like, yeah, while well, we have a second, I know there's been some comments in the chat about um, like daily creative challenges and just like what else is going on. I know at the beginning of the stream, which was a little while ago, we had the agenda, but Cody's going to continue designing all the way till um, two Pacific time today, and he'll be back again tomorrow. So don't forget to tune back in to see where all of this ends up and um, all of the work for National Bark, <laughs> which will be exciting. But there's also the daily creative challenges. And so right after the stream, there will be another one on. And so you can um, stay tuned and check that out. Um, and yeah. Sweet. So now I want to actually add some images in here. So I have some stock imagery here from Adobe Stock. And I think we could just do like areas around, like roughly around where San Francisco is, just because there's a lot of cool like national parks up there. So I know there's um, like that land's end. I don't know if it's necessarily considered national park, but it's a cool area. But I found this picture of like this dog and his human, just kind of overlooking like a nice, you know, nature scene. And it's got some negative space. And it also like this image itself can lend itself well to some text being down here, um, just because there is a darker kind of portion of the image. But I think we're also gonna have to add just like a, a subtle kind of gradient overlay, maybe like a, a black value that kind of fades out to nothing so that we can make sure that the text is always legible. So what I'm gonna do for that is actually just kind of create the same card again, actually. I can just duplicate this one over. And then let's go to our fill. And instead of a solid color, I'm gonna do a linear linear gradient. And we're just gonna go 100%, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 on both of these. And then I can select one of these and just bring this slider all the way down. And it creates just like a more of a gradient. And then I can actually bring my opacity down as well. So right now it's on the top. We can just rotate this and then we can kind of fine tune our gradient too. If you select it, you actually get control on it. So I think just right here, you can see it's starting to darken up the bottom. That's gonna allow us to have a nice kind of plate for our text to kind of sit on top of. Yeah, so in that color picker, that very rightmost one that Cody was adjusting, uh vertically, I was like, we're horizontally or vertically, is uh, yeah, the transparency. So you can kind of adjust that. So we brought that transparency all the way down um, as well as then adjusting opacity of the overall gradient. And I might need to go a little bit smaller on our actual text for our cards. I don't know, I think probably 14 would be the smallest we wanna go. Have you ever been to Land's End? Yeah, it's beautiful. That's I think that's I might have gone there last time I went up to San Francisco. It's one of my favorite places because it's just uh, the view is amazing. Yeah, it's really nice. I was gonna go this weekend, but then it was pretty cloudy and cold here, and I got right. a little crazy over break. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to you don't wanna get rained on out there. Yeah. So let's say Lands End, and I know this is not Lands End, but we're just you know working with stock, so we're gonna make pretend. Lands End Lookout um, Dog Park. There's not a dog park there, but maybe there could be. I don't know. I want to see what medium 
maybe maybe like 13 point just I think that kind of works I'm just changing my spacing a little bit I always find myself just kind of backing up a little bit just to see if it reads well and then let's just see here I want to maybe we can actually show like the distance of like how far away this place is from where you're at so you want to know if it's worth driving to because a lot of times if you're using a, like an app like this like a travel app you want to find like the nearest attraction so let's give them that let's give the user like that little tidbit of information that lets them know like maybe this one's only 2.3 miles away and then i'm going to bring this down in size to maybe like a 10. and maybe we go to like a regular font font weight here and i can i can play around my crop of this image if it's not like fully working for me let me just label this one overlay so that i know this is our black gradient overlay i'm going to turn it off for a second so i can play around with this crop a little bit you can even see like as soon as you turned it off like how helpful it is to have that gradient in order to have legible text because i find it can be really hard like the variation of yeah. photography like images that you're going to get and you're going to have throughout like an app like this you're going to have to think through well every photo is going to be different the placement of where people are or the colors that are going to be there like how is text going to read over that and so the thing that cody did around adding an overlay will be helpful in terms of for like the mass photos you're going to have, being able to have that text be something that you can read clearly. Yeah, especially like if this app is going to be managed by a different team or or if you know, if you know that they're going to be like user generated photos, I don't know like what the case might be. It's yeah. good to kind of build in and kind of like foolproof it so that, you know, it, it's functional and it doesn't break the design per se. Ideally, you want curation involved so that it does have that, you know, we want the photos to feel like like they're all in the same kind of mood board in a sense, but um, just kind of, yeah, like I said, full proofing it will help to make sure that it works. Yeah, I feel like the other thing that at least, you know, in Adobe, the other thing we consider a lot in terms of like when we're designing is also for like different languages, like depending on the app you have, like maybe it's something that's going to be localized to other languages. And so we have to think about like how much text space is there going to be? How, like, is this going to be much longer in like Japanese or like, you know, is it going to be shorter? Um, there's also plugins that you can get with Adobe XD where you can start to look at what those different languages, it'll populate it for you and translate it so you can see like how your design is flexing um, across languages, which is a really good tip as well. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Um, working with uh, EFM Experiences for Mankind, we do a lot of that with uh, our apps. We design for Microsoft and um, there's like a ton of different uh, languages that we have to consider when we're designing for apps. So there's certain things we can't get away with designing because um, it's just not feasible for those longer uh, languages. And I think I have used a few of those plugins for some of the apps that we design. Um, and it's, uh, I think like German might be one of the longer ones. I was going to say, yeah, German, I think yeah. is really long. It's a good gut check for sure. Like it, yeah. it might not be perfect. And then you'll have, you know, the language team come in and they'll give you the exact, you know, copy that you might need or something, but it's good to get it signs for sure. Um, Marsha in the chat was saying the gradient's great. Can you save that gradient in a library? Yes, I believe you can. Let's see. Um, yeah, so it should be right there. So let's see if I apply it to this. I think. It's a really good question. I'm not sure if you can copy it as a fill itself. I wonder if like as an asset in the library. You can, you can copy it. So if I select this overlay, if I, I believe if you hit copy and I go to this one and hit paste appearance. Yeah. So it'll do that. Maybe that's something that we can uh, talk to the Adobe XD team about. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and so what I'm adding now is um, a lot of um, dog parks, at least around like San Diego, there's certain ones that are just for smaller dogs or bigger dogs. And so I think we needed like, maybe some of these parks are only for smaller dogs or for bigger dogs, or maybe they accommodate both. Cause that's a real possibility is if something like this was actually built out, maybe there's just not space for, you know, a huge dog to be running around. Maybe it's only like a smaller confined area that maybe like a dog like Coda could go to. So 
I think just allowing the um, the user to know, like giving an indication on these cards so that they're not wasting their time clicking into something that maybe is not gonna suit them. Um, so I'm gonna create these little kind of like labels. These are like almost like a badge in it, I guess, that um, can kind of highlight those different um, sizes. So I think this is where I wanna pull in some of the other colors that we were using in the app. So maybe like this lighter green. And then I'm just gonna duplicate this, bring it to the top. Maybe this one's only for small dogs. Because I know Land's End is a little bit like, there's not a ton of space to really erect like a new building or something like that or a new park. So maybe this is just a smaller little, more of like a mobile one that they put out in the parking lot. I don't know. All the information that you wanna know at a quick glance before you, I, I like it's like, Pull, pulling out those small things of like how how far away is it or like the small tidbits of like how big of dogs are allowed there and then like when you actually go to click in I feel like that's when you got like all the detailed information and like all this extra good bit but it's like the things you might want to like filter by or things like that is like what you might put on that first view of a card exactly and like this information this isn't based off of like any research, I'm just kind of guessing right now. So it's an assumption, but I think like when you're actually working on apps like this, it's good to do a little bit like more, um, you know, qualitative and quantitative research and get some like surveys done. Maybe actually talk to like real people like that own dogs and kind of get a good sense of like, what are some of the things that they would want to see? You might even have multiple flows of this page. So maybe there's different information presented instead of just 2.3 miles away or small dogs. Maybe there's another bit of information that is a little bit more, um, you know, it makes more sense for that that demographic. Um, but this is just the first iteration. Um, you can make multiple flows in XD, which is pretty sweet. Um, so you could test those. But for now, we're going to go with this. And let's just call this small dogs. And what's cool, too, I think we're going to make a stack out of these. Um, if I right click on all of these and I group them, just call it card info. And then let's come over to the right side here in our layout panel and just click stack. And so what that's, what that's doing now is essentially creating a sort of like relationship between each component or each element. So if I grab say small dogs here and moved it up, it's gonna keep that same seven pixel spacing between each element. So if, if like maybe the client came back and they're like, you know what we want, 2.3 miles away underneath Land's End, or actually we want the title at the bottom. You know, you could you can have that control and flexibility within your card. I don't think it looks good that way. So we're gonna put it back, but at least we have this. And we can actually make this a component. So maybe we make this, uh, let's group all this together. Since we built it once, we don't have to re we don't want to we don't want to have to rebuild it like 30 other times or however many cards there are. So let's uh, make a component. Let's just call it card two line. Since we have two lines of text here, there could be one that just has say maybe just says lands and look out. And notice that when I scale this um text box up, it brings those other um, elements up with it because it's in that kind of stack that we've created. So it's super helpful. Yeah, stack is interesting. I think it's also dependent like on the features, the area that you want to use it in. I can imagine also like when you had the previous like pill buttons for like sign up with phone or Chewy, like you could use that there if you want to like switch the order. But like when things get more complex, I feel like it can be a really nice quick way to kind of like transition things and just kind of switch them around. Exactly. And uh, I think there's a way too to add, um, I'm still kind of familiarizing myself with stacks and like padding, but I know that you can add like padding to say, we could try it, let's see. You can add padding to like elements so that if you ever size them up or, or bring them down, it kind of, the object that's around it will kind of inherit the same like padding around it. 
Yeah, it definitely takes, I think the responsive resize section in general takes a little getting used to in terms of like understanding like what you're keeping consistent versus what would, will flex still. But I think as you play with it, you start to get a better sense too. Nice. See that it's, it's keeping it consistent so that even as the card gets longer, you know, it stays kind of locked to this bottom, which is kind of nice. Um, I think we can play around with some three transform too. Maybe this is a, like a there's like a card flip that happens. Um, I think we can add like a little heart icon up here. So maybe you can like this particular park. So you've been there before, or you want to save it for later. Maybe you're not quite in that area, but you want to log it into the app so that you can visit it later. Maybe there's a little kind of like a heart icon here. Or paw, paw. Oh, it could be a paw. <laughs> That's a great that idea, actually. Something? I don't know. Or bookmark it. <laughs> Let's see. That's actually, see? We're like co-designing now. There we Let's go. see, <laughs> paw print. Now oh, it's really Audrey. a dog app. Looking back at Audrey with the little tongue. I know, look at Audrey. <laughs> I kind of just want to um, just do this real quick just so that <laughs> we can just have her down here. <laughs> always, always looking out. Yeah. yeah, she's our little mascot for now. Coda, don't get jealous. She's not a real dog. Um, so I'm going to paste. Well, that's not. <laughs> that's not a, our paw. Here it is. Audrey's following us everywhere. And I think like right now it's filled in. We can just make it a border. 100% white. I might go to like two point or maybe like 1.5. We're gonna have to space out these paws a little bit because they're getting kind of um, too close to each other. I just want a little bit more clear space around the stroke so it doesn't like bleed together too much. And I feel like it's what you're talking about earlier, like being able to take some assets, like go in and search for something that maybe is free or some other one someone else has created there and like make it your own, like adjust it a little bit just to make sure that it fits perfectly within like the design you're working on, um, similar to the illustration like you were working on earlier and like adding trees just to make it that much better for like what you're working on. Exactly. Customization is essential, I feel like, especially, well, in design, it is essential. You have to be able to make changes and iterate and it's just what it is. Cool. And I'm actually going to put this paw into like an actual container so that when we, if we prototype it, we actually have a bigger hit target for like your thumb to click on. So right now, if we just try to prototype this, it's going to want to select this stroke. So if we come in here and grab a rectangle, I'm just gonna drag this over it. Maybe make it about, I don't know, 30 by 30 for now. Get rid of this stroke. Come back to our layers panel. Let's just label this paw real quick. And if I shift uh, click both of these and go to object mask with shape, it's creating an invisible container around it. So you're never going to see it, but at least you know that um, it's contained within that kind of hit target. And I'm actually going to center align these. Hold on. Because the shape isn't like a perfect square, it's not going to center align perfectly. So I'm just going to adjust it. That looks pretty good. And then let's just call this icon paw. All right, there seems nice. Nice. And then, um, so let's do, it's like when you click that paw, it can like fill in and then maybe flip the card to show you that you added it to your, your liked uh, parks. So in order to do that, I'm just going to make another artboard here. 
Well, let's make sure that this paw is within our our card. So I'm just double clicking on my card, making sure that I have selected. So it's pasted within that. So now it's within the family of that card. And then we'll duplicate this page. And so if you come over to here to the right where it says transform, your transform panel, you have this little cube. It's like a newer element that was uh, introduced at Adobe Max this year, which is pretty sweet. Uh, now we have the ability to actually add 3D transformations to objects. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click that. And you can see you get these new little kind of like widgets here, these little icons. It's basically telling you that these are the values of what um, what happens when you rotate this card. So I can go like left to right. I can even go like um, forward and backwards. So you really get like some perspective on things. I think for this, we kind of want it to just like flip around and then like reveal, um, you know, it says like, some sort of notification that you save this to your liked parks. So what I'm gonna do for that is, I'm gonna build the backside first. So this is our front side. I'm gonna build the backside of this card, kind of like, I'll use this one since we have it built right here. I'm gonna take 3D off real quick, just so I can build flat. Just copy this text, paste it, bring it over. And maybe it says something like, um, I don't know, like saved, saved to favorite parks. We'll add an exclamation just to, you know, make it a little bit more fun. I love that you're showing off the transform tool. I feel like it's so cool to have it also like real time on canvas that you can like grab and actually spin it yourself or like, you know, see that twist happening or you can obviously use the like more precise, you know, go in and, and adjust on the right hand side with the actual numbers. Yeah, it's still something I'm, I'm playing around with a lot, but it's a very powerful tool that I think is going to add a lot of uh, just really interesting interactions to to apps and to digital experiences. Yeah, I'm curious to see how it how people end up using it. I feel like, you know, figuring out like the right, you don't want to like overdo it and have like everything that's like flipping or everything's transformed or something like that. But like right. the right balance of like, you know, classy, <laughs> nice, clean uses of it are really nice. What's going on with my paw? Let's just get another paw. <laughs> Yeah, and as Voodoo Val mentioned in the chat, we have about 15 minutes left. So if you have other questions for Cody um, or myself, like feel free to send them through. Um, we're here with you guys um, until 2 p.m. Uh, yeah, Pacific time. Uh, so feel free to send those through as Cody's working on closing out the national bark. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Okay, so this is a backside. So maybe this flips over and shows you that once you click on this paw. I just added like another Paul just to reiterate what you did um, and then, you know, label there. And I kind of like this, this forest green, actually. I use that just as like a placeholder fill, but I think it, it's kind of nice to go from image to just full color. So let's try this. No guarantees that this is going to work, by the way. Um, let's call this Paul. I do really like the the green on the green though with the paw especially too because it does feel like even more so that it's kind of been like printed in like someone kind of stepped on that same yeah. like, grassy field or something. Okay, so I'm gonna put this right above it so it's directly on top. I'm then gonna move the saved one right below it. Hold on, what did I just do? So card two, oh, cause it's in 3D right now. So, or let's make it 3D, put this on top. This is also 3D, put it below it. And I'm just gonna flip this. Let me lock my card two line. I'm gonna flip this around and then I'm gonna turn the appearance to zero. And then let's duplicate this artboard We're gonna lock our saved because we only want to we only want to touch our card two line, and then I'm gonna flip this around, and then I'm making sure that this is a this value right here is 180 negative 180, 
it starts at it starts at regular 180 you can't see it because it's locked but when it gets to this point we want to turn this completely off and then we want to turn our saved value all the way up and flip it to 360 let's see if that works <laughs> so i'm going to prototype this i'm going to click this bring it over tap auto animate let's see what happens okay so it's so it's somewhat working i think uh this needs to be 360 maybe oh i know why I have this locked, I think. Okay, let's give this a try. We're getting there, we're getting there. Card two line, card two line. Let's try this one more time. Saved, zero, zero. This is some advanced stuff right here, guys. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I, was, I feel like as you're going through, you're like, I'm gonna flip this, then I'm gonna flip this one, and then you <laughs> this one, and then you flip in, then I copy. I'm like, oh yeah, okay, wow, let's see. This, <laughs> I'm still teaching myself this stuff, to be I, honest. Yeah, so. no, same. The transform stuff, it's still, um, especially when you have stuff layered on top of each other and you have to change like the opacity to get things to work in between when you're prototyping, it can be super hit or miss. Like, you know what you want to get out of it, but sometimes, there's like one thing that just you're like, oh, like I left that opacity at zero. It could be just like the way that I'm labeling my uh, my paths. I think this path might be the same name as this path. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, so let's just change this to green BG for background. And we'll make sure that we do it here too. That's the one thing, if you're ever like finding yourself like getting caught with like auto animate, you gotta make sure everything's named the same way. I think it's naming or I know um, Laura was saying, did you change the Z index of the two cards to minus one and one or Voodoo Val was saying, is the prototype branch supposed to connect to the screen or the identical card uh, because it's not attached to the card on the second screen there, but just the screen itself. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of yeah, There's so many things people, that can be. people are thinking through already, which is great. <laughs> Let's try this one more time. I will figure this out. If not today, tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, if not, yeah, well, but there's always tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to not make it a component, maybe see if that's having anything to do with it. So this is the thing about these live streams. You never know what's going to happen. Group. We'll just say front. Yeah, Henry was saying, make sure the Z is more than zero. Um, Z is more than zero. That was Henry's suggestion in the chat. It was 0.33. Let's just try it as one for both. I think it is a Z index thing. Yeah. So I put it, because I was playing around with it earlier, remember? when I was like demonstrating how to do it. Okay, so let's try this. Do -do. Off, save will be flipped. Okay, so they have the same Z index. So let's see what happens now. Moment of truth. <laughs> There we go. Hey. Okay. So then we need to turn the saved to zero opacity on this one. Cause I'm seeing it like happen a little bit too much. So on this artboard, I need to go to design real quick. Let's turn it down hundred percent. Now it should be good. Moment of truth. Okay. There's something weird happening in the middle there. Maybe it needs to be on or 
I know another another trick. Might you can make this a snap. First card might has to go might have to go the back too on the second artboard, or is it is it above it? So front saved. Looks like but it's, it's so good. Close. It's so close. <laughs> Everyone's excited in the chat. Like, Yay, <laughs> nice, yes. <laughs> and, and this is a, a very new tool too. So like, I think as we play around with it more in the next coming months, like we're gonna be able to master these card flips a little bit better. Uh, totally, and Henry in the chat, thanks for the comment around thinking about the the Z a little bit more and figuring that out. Everyone's suggestions were very helpful. Um, I feel like it's general problem solving to figure out like what's going on in some of these hookups sometimes. That's pretty cool oh, though. Yeah. Like. We can even have it, um, I know we're getting short on time, but really quick, I can have this, we can add a time transition so that it, I don't want it to stay there forever. I want it to eventually go back because once you get that indication, you're like, okay, what if I want to get back into that card? So we could do like a time transition, maybe a delay about like two seconds. And then I want it to auto animate back to this card or to this uh, artboard. So let's flip it. And then it comes back. So that's kind of nice. And then looks like our little like paw went away. Don't know what happened with that. This paw has been giving me trouble today. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, my suggestion of the paw. <laughs> we can but, get back into that one more tomorrow. Yeah. But, but we made some good progress today, I think, you know? Totally. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Everyone is like super stoked on the chat. And I feel like, yeah, Golden was saying teamwork. Yes, teamwork makes the dream work. Everybody in the chat helping to make this last piece come together. Um, I feel like you like perfectly nailed it on in terms of timing, but maybe you wanna quickly recap kind of what you covered today and we can then chat a little bit about what people can expect to tune into tomorrow. Absolutely. Um, thanks for tuning in guys. Um, we kind of took this brand that I created, a fictitious brand uh, named National Bark. Um, we took all of these elements and colors and this illustration, created an onboarding uh, flow basically in Adobe XD. So we've got our fonts, our colors. Uh, let me come back to this. We created just like a, a splash page, a create account slash sign in page, and then maybe an actual create page or sign up page with your different phone numbers, Chewy or email. Um, so kind of looking at that first flow, playing with illustration from Adobe stock, and then actually getting more into like the more in more in depth of the app of what it's actually going to be doing. So you're gonna be able to find different destinations for parks and hikes and maybe overnight stays. These are all places that would, you know, fictitiously live outside of national parks that are popular. And, um, you know, you could book a experience or a stay for your furry friend. And we actually prototype some of these pages together um, using the auto animate. We started playing around with this three transform. It was a little <laughs> tricky, but uh, we got it to work for the most part. And, um, you know, we actually had some nice transitions happening between these few pages here. And again, these are just nice little delightful details that kind of make the app stand out and a little bit more fun for, for your audience or for your users. So I think we made some, some good progress in the two hours that we had. Yeah, I definitely feel like you got through a lot and I feel like it's been nice to go through the process of kind of seeing where you started in terms of just like the thinking of um, the like pen sketch that you had of like your plans of what you're going to go through and then actually going through and like seeing you design because I know every designer's process is a little bit different everyone we've had on the stream like way they organize their file and kind of think through that or how they want to pick their colors or they really start super lo-fi and then come back and add a little bit more higher fidelity. Um, I feel like you're kind of in that in between when you start to design, you, you do have a little bit of high fidelity as you design for sure. Um, but it's super nice to, I think, like walk through that process. And I know people in the chat right now are saying um, a big thanks to you, Cody, um, for all the stuff you're going through and that people are learning from you today on, on the stream. Well, thank you guys for for chiming in too because you you guys have helped me with that 3d transform and along with some other things that we went through today so and thank you danielle for for being an awesome host and hanging out with me of course yeah um so everyone don't forget um there's definitely stay tuned there's more streams that are happening right after this daily creative challenges um and there's also uh the yep thank you creative encore that's going to be happening with chutzpah design um at 2 30 so lots more and this is just day one with cody we're really excited he's going to be back again same time tomorrow um and you can tune in and see how national bark the app um all comes together 
So thank you all and have a good rest of your day. See ya.